photography, it's very different from a lot of professions. I used to work in corporate America as a licensed counselor, and I would counsel the lonely and the weak, I should say. Photography is pretty emotional to me too. I think that's why I love it so much. Uh, or you can just say my emotional IQ is just so high to where I'm just attached to anything that is captivating emotions in a sense. Things like storytelling that photography can do has really made me immerse myself in using this as a pathway to be vulnerable. I love telling the stories of others just through a lens. It's almost like I know when to press that button to take that picture to be exact. When it's that certain smile or that certain pose, I know when to press that button. <laughs> Whether I'm setting up a scene, I know how to make you feel something again. Photography has never done me wrong. I kid you not. When I was working as a counselor, it did me wrong a lot. I like to find myself in creating images. I like to find myself in being creative in general. It's never did me wrong just trying to take an idea with an idea and create something. These pictures that I take, they aren't for me, they're for you. Hopefully photography is one of those things that I never get tired of because to be really serious, film photography has made me feel like I'm learning photography all over again. And I've been shooting for five years. And this past year has just been a huge, huge transition over to film, but man, there's there's been so many ups and downs. Especially when I'm out here documenting things. Whether it be from the hood or whether it be from a couple. Just creating is just making me feel so alive. I always want to feel alive. I never want to lose the feeling that photography really gives me. I had an amazing shoot with two models by the name of Tavea and Fox. They specifically just killed this, ep this episode. Um, man, this episode was about storytelling and photography. A lot of us don't really know how to go about telling a story through our photos or whatever, but a lot of times you have to bring a cinematic aspect to the shoot if you're trying to tell a certain story or give off um, the, the idea of telling a story. So in this shoot, we had a, a lot of great pictures. These eight are the main ones that I've developed already and want you guys to check out. They are beautiful, I love them. My favorite one is the the two of them when they're at the picnic table and there's just so much story. I said so much story. There's just so uh, much of a, of a, uh, how can you, how would you even put it? How, would you, how, how could I word it? It's such a mood. Like it's telling you so much with her holding her girlfriend's hand and them just being immersed into the idea of just posing perfectly. Uh, I did notice that a lot of my photos, their the coloring needs to, I'm trying to get better at coloring. Ektar was gonna be my first film stock that I ever was going to buy. 
um, when I bought my film camera a year ago. But I happened to not ever get it because I saw some reviews about it that people were screaming that it sucks. And you know, that was when the ride was to ride the wave of getting Portra 400. So I kind of stirred away from it forever up until a year later where I'm like, okay, is this the only film stock? It's ironic that I'll be using. And man, this shit was beautiful. We actually were in the, we just hit the town. We went to a, a, a local flower shop. Outside of that, we, we just captured some dope fucking moments. Um, we live in a historical area downtown. We all do, and so we went on a walk also as well. And uh, we just stopped in front of a set of flowers in someone's front yard. And we just captured a few moments there too. Those actually came out great. The, it's uh, the pictures where I have one portrait of each of them, you know, with the flowers uh, in the background of them. And you know, this this idea of, of taking portraits is going to be actually, actually for me, immersed in storytelling too. Um, I'm going to try to stick stick with telling stories. I'm going to try to stick with that. Uh, even though you know a lot of times the people that I shoot they don't really uh, you know portray that image but somehow I'm going to try to uh, implement a, to get them to tell a story so one thing that I also wanted to talk about was how to make models actually you know comfortable enough to to feel like they can tell their story uh, you know through through the lens and, and I think one of the main reasons why I was able to get these two to really tell their story through these images was well, just by letting them be themselves like in general you have to let whoever you're shooting be themselves if, if you're trying to direct them to, to look a certain way in, in as far as in their face or stand they're not going to be able to tell their story you know there are the cinematic shots that you could make sure that like say uh, you want someone to act as if they're walking out the front door, capturing that, pause. Yes, that's a, a part of directing a, a cinematic shot, but when you're trying to tell a story, these stories have to be told specifically through the subjects. Uh, and two, you might want to be uh, specific on the film stock you use. Because for example, Ektar, it loves the sunlight. And the sunlight loves the shadows when it comes to this film stock. It is immaculate how these photos will turn out if you're really trying to tell a story. And you want to use that sunlight as far as also using those shadows to tell your story too. Because you want to place something with the subject. You don't want to just tell a story by telling a story with just, you know, me sitting here and just looking out off or looking off and being like, capture that. No, I, there needs to be some type of implementation somewhere to be able to tell the story or to captivate someone. That's, that's how I feel. You can't just tell stories by, you know, you can't even tell a story if you're trying to shoot in a studio. Like, telling a story, I don't think you can do that by shooting in a studio. So, that's tip three. Make sure you are uh, capturing a scene when trying to tell a story as well. Don't just tell tell the story by putting the subject in a, in a in a studio with just a blank or white or black backdrop. You're not gonna be able to tell much. <laughs> and if you think that you can, then you guys need to. Oh my God! Show me how that works because uh, I'm really interested in it simply because I'm trying to also dive into studio photography too. So I'm looking to learn <clears throat> a little bit when it comes to studio work. Um, anyway, I'm gonna cross back over to Ektar again for the second time. Uh, it's a very, it, it has very vibrant colors too. It definitely does. Um, and it works in really harsh, with really harsh uh, lighting. So it's, it's really great to be outside and shooting this uh, for sure as well, instead of being in the studio. Um, I found out that the colors were, were so vibrant, so therefore I am so fortunate to know that the fact that I shot in a lot of colors today worked out to my advantage. So uh, those guys that are using Ektar 100, take advantage of that. Um, cause a lot of film stocks they don't they don't 
really complement uh, as far as color wise too too often. Uh, I know Porter 400 does it, but um, yeah, and I really think that this this is really saturated. This uh, film stock, it, it probably is mainly used for landscape photography. I would assume just because it's so saturated, um, and you, you, can get, you, know, you can get a lot of uh, greens out of this too. So. I, I can see it being used for uh, a lot of landscapes. Um, another thing is that, you know, on the box it says world's finest grain. Uh, I think I agree with that because you really don't see too much grain in this uh, film stock, like, period. Um, so if you're like a digital photographer and you're just now transitioning over to film photography, this would be the closest uh, film stock to digital if you want to be typical. Um, it definitely isn't pretty, pretty much. It, is a really saturated film stock, so it might be a little too oversaturated uh, if you if you shot portraits with it. Because uh, when I was editing, I, I noticed like the portraits they were pretty uh, saturated, and when I would add just a little bit of saturate, like like just moved a little bit, it would just like, bump it up uh, like a lot, and it was kind of interesting that, to see that in this film stock. But um, if you're someone that uh, prints your photos a lot, I, re I highly recommend using this film stock because of, you know, it's got this, the grain is just to almost zero. So I, I imagine that if you were to blow these, uh, blow these up as far as with prints, um, it would be very, very, very nice. So, And another tip is this, with this being a 100 ISO film, I actually, with a few of my photos, I shot at 80 ISO. And one thing I noticed was it, was that when shooting at 100 ISO, the saturation is it's like it's like even higher. So I mean even worse. But when I tried at 80 ISO, it, they actually were like the best photos I've taken, like in my you know opinion. So that's another thing. If you're going to shoot with this film stock, make sure you have 80. It, it'll definitely do you a lot of justice. Especially if you're going to shoot some portraits, um, but as far as landscape photography, it might be best to keep it at 100 ISO because I shot this at around 2 p.m. Uh, there was just blue, blue uh, skies, no, no shade anywhere, um, a lot of harsh light, and you know that often makes the photos either too bright. But even though this film stock works great in harsh light, the, the saturation still does come out. Like, it, it's weird, but it, it, it definitely stands out. So, um, like I said, I recommend uh, going down to stock. So to close this out, if you're gonna use Ektar, I highly recommend it uh, for landscapes. Um, unless you're like me and don't care to edit the saturated portraits and the, and the reds that come with all these um, uh, colors from the Ektar. Uh, I recommend this thing. Uh, you know, it's a film stock that you have to use with a lot of light. So I recommend if you aren't able to do that, don't get this uh, film stock. Also, um, to let you guys know, this is one of Kodak's more professional film stocks. Um, they do have another professional film stock by the name of Portra 160. I used that last week and I actually overly enjoyed that too. I should have mentioned that early in the video. That'll be one of the film stocks that I'll be, I'll be using too. But um, I'm definitely going to be using this a lot. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy these photos. Uh, stay tapped in with me. I will continue to bring you guys heat in the videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys soon. Be mindful.